Hello and welcome to Cartoon Cosmonauts, a podcast all about animated short films and their creators. Each episode will feature a new guest giving us the lowdown on their approach to making animation. I'm your host, Joseph Orr, and a quick reminder that this podcast is available on all major podcasting platforms, as well as on YouTube as a video interview. So, on today's episode, I'm pleased to welcome special guest Christian Haynes. Christian hails from Sully, California, and is here today to talk about his independent TV show, Zack in Time. It's a really fun throwback to the classic 90s cartoons complete with a funky theme song. I'll leave a link to the teaser trailer below. Currently in production on the official trailer for the show, Christian, his producer Paige, and the rest of the team plan to launch an Indiegogo campaign to help fund the pilot. This is a fascinating discussion where Christian shares his insights on the inspiration for the series, diversity and identity of the main characters, and how they want to help young artists get a start in their careers by working on this show. So, without further ado, let's jump in. So, Christian, uh, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. And where are you? uh, What part of the world are you dialing in from today? Yeah, I live in uh, Reedley, California. Um, uh, Yeah, North America. (laughs) Okay, nice. I'd say say the weather is moderately warm over there at the moment. Uh, Actually, in the Central Valley, it's actually pretty cool out here. It's been kind of like in the 50s, uh, like lower 50 or upper 50s. Um, kind of like low 60s so it's actually been kind of cool uh, Fahrenheit okay. so, right. yeah I was gonna say yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Celsius Fahrenheit yeah, yeah that's uh, that's quite warm for for where we are but uh, no I, yeah. I co- completely understandable yeah over here uh, it's well Ireland is normally predominantly cold even in the summer but uh, it's also quite dark at the moment it gets dark around here about five so it's a mm. nice contrast from where we are which is great so we have you on the show today to talk about your upcoming tv series zach in time but Mm. what i like to do as part of this is before we jump straight into talking about it maybe get a little bit of background about you so can you talk to us maybe about how you got into animation yeah definitely i've I've always loved animation ever since i was a little kid i just like watched so many cartoons i love nickelodeon cartoon network disney channel i was obsessed um (laughs) and uh I I just kind of, I would always like draw all the time. Like even like during school, I'd be drawing little comic books instead of paying attention to the lesson. Um, (laughs) As you do. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, And then, you know, eventually my parents were like, okay, you just need to filter all this into into something kind of creative or kind of constructive. (laughs) So um, I kind of, on the side, I would kind of like do my own kind of like little comic books and animations and, and things like that. And it kind of just kind of grew from there. Um, I just, you know, I love movies and TV shows and just storytelling and things like that. And, you know, just kind of just built and built from there. So yeah, I've always just kind of loved animation as a medium. Okay, wow. And when you were saying, you know, trying out, I think that's something a lot of people can relate to is, you know, that kind of doodling. And there's always that, you know, that bottom page of like your, your copy book or whatever that you can flip through sometimes as well. Did you have, as a kid, did you have any kind of experience with animating in terms of like, you know, were you using any software or like a camera to take pictures of things you were drawing or was it more kind of like comic book, like still images? Yeah, it was definitely very, very unprofessional uh, comic book, uh, just still images. Um, I've never actually really trained on an animation program. Um, I took one semester of animation in college, um, but it definitely wasn't, it it was very like basic level, Um, but I've always been just like kind of like more like hand-drawn sketching, um, things like that. And I just get like a uh, a notepad or um, some colored pencils and just kind of draw Brilliant. that way. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's great because it's nice to get, I think the great thing about animation is that it's it's so varied in terms of like, you don't have to be, you know, it sounds silly to say you don't have to be an animator to be an animation. You know, it's an obvious mm-hmm. statement. But the idea that you can be, you know, coming in this, a lot of people who start, do start by drawing and actually animating and stuff. Whereas I like that you're coming at it from the kind of more illustration side you know, obviously having an idea, what kind of like writer, director kind of side of things. And you were talking about, uh, you know, films and TV shows in there. Do you have any, I always like to ask people, do you have any favorite uh, films that, that spring to mind? Always a tough question. Oh, no, no, not tough, not tough at all. Um, I'm a huge fan of like uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, uh, Lego Movie, Spider-Man oh. to the Spider-Verse, like anything they touch, like I'm always, I'm <laughs> always into, because um, I just love how they balance like comedy action and heart like you just like every time you watch those movies you get like a full spectrum of emotion um yeah. i love them 
Um, I grew up uh, uh, watching Butch Hartman a lot, like Fairly Odd Parents. Danny Phantom was a huge inspiration for yes. me. Love that show. Still doing fan fan art for that show. Uh, to oh, wow. Day. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably Avatar The Last Airbender is another huge inspiration uh, for me as well. Okay. Uh, wow. yeah, and, and SpongeBob. Got to mention SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, SpongeBob, I, I read some crazy fact about it the other day where it was like the second longest running animated TV show or something like behind the Simpsons something crazy yeah. where you know you kind of think to yourself mm -hmm. like jesus has it actually been out that long and when you think back to when it first came out it really has uh just endured for something like completely yeah. wacky and original um mm -hmm. okay brilliant and yeah you were saying about phil lord and chris miller as well mm -hmm. i remember for ages i never really kind of knew their name i obviously knew their work like i love the lego movie but now i think it's become a point where you see their name attached to something mm -hmm. and i think you you kind of get excited you have a yeah. high expectations uh mm -hmm. for their work but uh, a lot of the time they do deliver so okay great um you were saying there about you studied kind of a, a semester of animation what was the what was the kind of course you were doing that that involved that yeah it was uh it was more like uh like concept art uh, my professor uh, his name was uh, armin serrano he was a uh, conceptual designer uh, for for Walt Disney for the Walt Disney uh, Company. I uh, worked wow. on like Zootopia and like Big Hero Six and all these like really big movies. Um, wow. So he was kind of mostly doing um, like like concept uh, designs. So we kind of have like a little Cintiq machines and uh, just like do little sketches and kind of just do the wow. basics of like that. So yeah, that's it was, incredible. It was pretty, like, yeah, it was like a pretty like basic course, but but it was it was really he was really cool. He even gave us like a tour of Walt Disney Studios, and we saw the premiere of The Cure of Six, and yeah, it was it was wow. really cool. That's yeah. why I'm always so jealous of America for that because even just something <laughs> as casual as that, you know, you're like, yeah, one of my lecturers was uh, you know working on these amazing films, and then got a tour of the place. That geez, that so that must. And um, what can I ask? Was that in your like final year, or what year of college was that in that you were doing this semester? Yeah, that was my senior year. Uh, senior year, okay. Yeah. Wow. And did you know in advance that you were going to have that semester or was it something that was kind of like you were just discovered it when you got to your last year? Yeah, I actually uh, discovered it uh, during my last year. Um, they, uh, wow. at my, I went to Biola University uh, in La Mirada, California, and uh, they actually didn't have a uh, animation and they still don't have an animation uh, kind of course so that people can kind of like major in that um it's kind of more like post-production is what they what they did so they kind of experimented okay. with having an animation course and we're kind of like the guinea pigs but i, I guess wow. they didn't have enough uh people who wanted to, to keep it around so I, i'm not sure if it's still there or not uh hopefully it's still there um but as far as i i uh, knew that was like the first year that they had it so i was like oh yep definitely wow. want to <laughs> hop on that geez that's so, what an incredible timing like yeah to get that opportunity like wow definitely that's so cool definitely. and can i ask what drew you towards, say, writing, directing over, let's say, animating? Was there a point, you know, during that semester, obviously getting exposed to this, you know, incredible film and studio, was there ever a point where you thought, like, I, I want to animate? Or were you always more like, no, I'd rather write and, and kind of direct and stay focused on that? Yeah, I think probably writing, directing. Um, I come from a, a family of writers. My, my dad is a creative writer. Um, he's actually oh, wow. kind of trying to write his own uh, novel or he's been writing his own novel, trying to get it published. So I've always kind of had that creative writing in okay. me. I've always kind of grew up kind of just writing stories and kind of like drawing on the side of like, okay, I can't really explain this through words. So I'll just kind of draw it. Dude, so I've always kind of had that storytelling kind of mentality. Um, I've always kind of just wanted to kind of be in charge of like where the story goes and who the characters are. So yeah, okay. I love that aspect. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, no, like I said, it's uh, I, I love your slant on it because i think a lot of people it's hard to uh, always think of animation like a tractor beam sometimes it's hard to resist the pull especially like i said having that kind of exposure to you know studios and, and those kind of lectures um so yeah that's great um we move on now to let's say discuss what we're here to talk about your uh, your upcoming tv show zach in time what i'll do is i know there's a teaser trailer out at the moment so I'll leave a link in the description and what I encourage anyone who's listening who maybe hasn't seen it yet to check it out first now before we start talking, because at least then you'll have a kind of frame of reference as we go through it. So Zach and Ty, this is your upcoming TV show. Can you give us like a little bit of background on it or, or give us the pitch? Tell us, tell us what it's about. 
Yeah, definitely. The um, right now we're working on kind of like the uh, the origin story of of the the of the idea, and it's about a uh, 13 year old boy named Zach. Um, he moves to a small town of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, he doesn't fit in there. He doesn't know anybody. You know, he's kind of picked on at school. And then one day he stumbles upon uh, this time traveling watch. Uh, he's taken back to like you know the American Revolution and you know all these. Uh, you know, ancient Egypt and all these different places. He, you know, at first he, he's, you know, he's afraid, he's scared, doesn't really know what to do with it. And then as the story goes on, he realizes that this watch was created by a secret government agency called the SIA, who created the watch to kind of go on time traveling missions. And he kind of gets wrapped up okay. in the whole uh, kind of agency conspiracy and everything to kind of go back in time and help out on missions and everything. So yeah, okay. it's like a coming of age, action adventure, time travel story. Wow. Okay. Jeez, that's a... Uh... No, that sounds great. Um, and am I right in saying that the the teaser trailer is out right now? Uh, mm -hmm. But you're currently you're working on a, a trailer, is it? That's coming out. Soon? Yeah, it'll be a full trailer. This uh, this teaser trailer is more like kind of like a 25 second teaser with the the promo that we did months and months ago, kind of attached to the end to make it like 40 seconds. But this one will be a full 45 second trailer with all uh, original footage in it. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. And like just to you know. I suppose, take a step back from it because the world you've created here, there's obviously so much scope for storytelling when it comes to time traveling. And, you know, the idea of picking up and being the sort of the new kid in somewhere that's completely kind of foreign to you is, is, is a very relatable story. But where, you know, sometimes when you sit down to write something like this, you've so much scope, it's hard to, to narrow it down. Where did this idea come from? This idea of like, you know, the kind of boy, in a in a in an unfamiliar surroundings where where did that all start yeah definitely it um it all kind of started uh kind of back i think it was my junior year of uh of college where i was kind of i didn't i wasn't really doing anything super creative i was just kind of hopping on from product to project to project and i didn't really feel like creatively fulfilled and uh, one of my best friends jared he just said like hey well, why don't you just work on your own original stuff come up with your own idea and I was like, yeah, that's actually yeah, pretty, pretty brilliant. So I uh, kind of just <laughs> grabbed a notebook and a pen and I just started writing ideas. Okay, if I had a TV show, what would it be? And then I wrote like, okay, like middle schoolers, um, time travel, uh, secret agents. And I couldn't really find an idea for any individual idea. So I was like, okay, why don't I mash it together? How about the kid <laughs> just who becomes together. a secret agent? Yeah, and then he goes on time traveling adventures. And then from that point on, like the, the ideas just kind of sprung into my mind. And uh, yeah, it's definitely like a vast concept, but I just try to just kind of come to like the basics. Okay, like who is this kid? You know, how does he find the watch? Who made the watch? And you know, why did they make the watch? I kind of just wanted to answer those basic questions, um, just so it can have some kind of structure. And then yeah. from there, it kind of the story kind of evolved. It kind of grew from there. Brilliant. And mm -hmm. when you were um, initially, you know, kind of planning this out in your head, was it always a TV show? Or did you ever see it as like a short film or a feature? Or was there any kind of evolution in that? Yeah, I think originally I would want it to be kind of like a, like a 22 minute kind of just a, a episode series. Um, the, the show definitely evolved from there. At first it was like, okay, maybe it'll be like a seven minute short or like an 11 minute short, 22 minute short, maybe a full feature, maybe a web series. So um, once I met up with my producer, her name's Paige, um, we kind of um, kind of decided, okay, let's just have the story just be like a, a feature film. And then we'll just kind of break it up into a web series because I tried to contain the origin story into like 11 minutes. And she was like, yeah, I don't think this is going to work as okay. kind of crammed in. So yeah. if you just kind of <laughs> let it expand and let it breathe. Uh, maybe we can just work, just take the first 11 minutes of the script and just focus on that as kind of like the pilot. So it definitely changed and evolved as the story went on. Um, went but, on. I think, but for now, we just decided like, hey, let's just have a feature length kind of origin story and then kind of have it spin off into like 11 minute uh, episodes. Brilliant. Okay. I love that. I love that process because I think, you know, a lot of people out there who start with ideas, you know, the blank page is almost sometimes the scariest thing because you're like, mm -hmm. it could be anything. You know what I mean? There's so mm -hmm. much choice nowadays. Streaming doesn't mean you have to have 20 minute episodes anymore. They can be mm -hmm. any length. So I love that, that you started, you thought of it as a feature and then something you could chop up. That's, that's mm -hmm. a really cool tip. I really like that. Um, and so that's a really, really nice synopsis of kind of, you know, where the story started. But for you, let's say you're by yourself, you're coming up with this idea and I'm sure there's a lot of people who can relate to that. You know, you kind of pour your heart into something creative because you have that itch and you have to scratch it. Mm -hmm. But where, you know, do you have any kind of 
I suppose not necessarily tips, but sort of advice on where you went, I suppose, for the first steps to get that made, because there's one thing having an idea, but who do you approach first in terms of like, I want to turn this into a series. Was there a particular person you went to first for advice or what were your, what were your steps? Yeah, again, definitely the first person with Paige. Um, she actually was an animator on the original version of Zack in Time, the one I did for my senior thesis back in college. Oh, brilliant, and, um, brilliant. Yeah, and then when I kind of wanted to decide to like kind of make this into like a full-blown series, because for the senior thesis film, it's kind of just more like a trailer. It's kind of like a concept, because obviously I wasn't going to make a 22-minute episode yeah. <laughs> in my college year. So I was like, okay, we'll just kind of make it like a concept trailer, and then maybe someday it'll be a series. Um, yeah. So I kind of put it on the shelf after college, and then once I really wanted to make the idea, uh, she was the first person I reached out to. I actually reached out to like the whole crew, but some of them were like, oh, no, I'm already working on this other job, or oh, no, I'm not really interested. But she was like that one person who was like, yeah, yeah, let's let's totally, let's do this. And she Brilliant. was completely serious, 100% committed to it. And, you know, we just kind of shot the idea back and forth of like how we should approach this. And she's she's super, she's definitely more of like the social one out of the two of us. So okay. she has all the <laughs> contacts in the industry. I'm more of like the introvert, like, I just want to be my room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. the classic like, okay, creative. To, yeah. yeah, she's like, no, we need to kind of get out of our little comfort zone and, uh, you know, actually reach out to people. So yeah, she kind of really took the lead in kind of helping us build out our crew, reaching out to people at like mixers or just people um, from different um, animation circles. And we really kind of built the Brilliant. growth. Community. Okay. And do you like, do you, do you think, is that, a like crucial step in terms of like for people out there who might be starting their own idea for you was that key having someone not only to kind of help you make it but to bounce ideas off at that stage like is that something like you would recommend oh yes for for sure yeah because especially having someone who kind of compliments you instead of kind of like you know copies you um because yes. yeah because Paige and I, we, we definitely have similarities, but we also have differences. She looks at things more from like a producer standpoint. I look at stuff from more like a writer director standpoint. So I can okay. have all these crazy ideas and she's like, okay, we, we really need to like choose one and <laughs> pursue that. So it's good to have that back and forth, someone to kind of balance, balance yeah. you out. So it kind of reigns it in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So Perfect. I would say if you do choose to have, bring on a partner, have someone that'll compliment you instead of just copy what you say instead of yes. yes man. Yeah. Okay. I think it's, <clears throat> hey, that's great advice again, because it's nice to have someone, like you said, there's so much to do with animation that is, you know, there's kind of the business and the creative side mm -hmm. and you need someone who has that kind of management, almost like yeah. here's the steps we need to take. Because I think as, you know, creative people, not all, but we tend to get like carried away and, you know, mm -hmm. oh, well, we could do this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, yeah. okay, calm, calm down. We need yeah. to start here. And was there any, <laughs> I suppose, it was yourself and, and Paige initially. Was there anyone else kind of part of that core crew? Like when you knew you had Paige on board and you were able to kind of say flesh out this idea, where did you go to next in terms of, was it animators or was it, you know, um, like kind of other script people or, or who did you go to next? Yeah, the next person we went to was a, an artist. His name's uh, Luke Scribner. Uh, he was kind of like, kind of like the, uh, kind of like the godfather of the entire kind of look and feel of the show. Uh, he came up with um, the character designs. He came up with the kind of the initial storyboards. Um, so oh. he was definitely a good and and the, the basic kind of animation did like pretty much almost half the shots of the the trail that we're currently working on. So he was definitely a huge part of of our crew. Um, and then he had a bunch of contacts as well in the animation circles. He was able to kind of. Uh, pick and choose different artists to help us out so we kind of really kind of let him let, take the lead on that uh, to kind of build up the animation crew mm -hmm. okay and how many <clears throat> because the i uh, had a look the the trailer the teaser trailer is great because it gives you a little snapshots of so many different characters and then i also saw your your pitch deck as well which was great for just really giving you a sense of like you know who's who the good the bad the friends mm -hmm. those kind of things did you have like many of those characters already developed by yourself going in or was this something you were able to kind of pass on to him and let him run with or, or did you have kind of frameworks for them yeah it was actually a good balance um i i came up with all the characters uh the the ideas i had for like their looks their appearances their personalities um and then i kind of because some some concepts i was kind of kind of not really sure on like i, I kind of have an idea for this character but i don't really know what he looks like and then he would okay. give me like tens of different different that 10 20 different designs on a character and i was like can i wow. like the hair from this from character okay. one like the chin of number two and you kind of combine it and kind of nice. like kind of re-sculpt it okay. into like kind of on the final form 
that's a great way to do it. Cause I was just going to say, I, I always, you always get to a point when I think you're collaborating sometimes when, you know, when you feel you've asked for like corrections or tweaks on certain, so many times you get to a point where you start to feel bad. Like, no, I'm asking too much. So I love that there's combination. It's almost like a sort of pick and mix. Like, you know, I want this part, this part, you know, put them all together. So that's great. And, and he was able to kind of drum up sort of several different versions for the yeah. one character. Wow. Okay. And how did you find as like someone who's, you know, you're creating these characters coming up with them in your head. How did you find that process? Like, do you prefer kind of having more control yourself or is it nice for a change to have someone that sort of take the written word and, and put their sort of slant on it? Yeah, I think, yeah, the, the latter, I think having someone else kind of take the reins um, cause I, I had like ideas for it, but I feel like the, the initial designs I had, the, all the characters kind of look very similar. I know with animation, yeah. the important thing is to have kind of like have the characters look as different as possible. So I kind of have, would have an idea for a character and then he would kind of have a completely different design. I'm like, oh, actually that works a lot better than what I initially yeah, thought. Okay. So, yeah, I think having, <laughs> having him, having the other side of, of it and having him kind of like, you know, come up with a bunch of different ideas was definitely helpful. Yeah. And I think you're so right. Some like fresh eyes on something always helps because I think as an artist, you naturally gravitate towards a certain look, you know, maybe without even realizing it, you know, you're kind of like, I, I tend to draw the same hair a lot. And I'm like, okay, no, I need to, and you're kind of flipping through like a comic or, or something on the internet just to try and see a different hairstyle or give them a hat or something. But, uh, yeah. and so you'd obviously be looking after kind of say, you know, this, the scripting and stuff, would you, would you ever kind of storyboard at all? Or would that be like, more kind of thumbnail sketches that you pass on to someone like how does that how does that work yeah i get for the uh the first script um i did all the storyboarding myself uh my little Brilliant. little crappy little storyboards um and just to kind of give an idea and a feel yeah. uh, for like what i'm kind of going for uh because i know like with the written word you know some concepts can be like okay i kind of get what you're saying but i would yeah. like to have like a visual representation so i i would draw every single thing and then i would pass it on to luke or other uh storyboard artists and they would kind of flesh it out kind of like add more kind of camera angles make things a little bit more dynamic and kind of yeah just kind of like add more detail to it brilliant brilliant and can i ask what um what program they're they're using like are you sketching your storyboards out like kind of pencil and paper or are you using any kind of software or anything i don't know for me um i just kind of just uh, drew it out on it i have a notebook for uh, storyboards uh, oh, actually, brilliant. Uh, right 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 here this is kind of storyboard <laughs> uh notebook oh, brilliant. yeah and i would just kind of like draw all the individual storyboards that actually you can see that there oh, amazing but yeah yeah i would kind of just like draw it in each of the panels um and then i would actually <laughs> like take pictures from my phone and then upload that to our google drive oh, brilliant. and then oh. the storyboard artists would take that from there i love that I, i'm genuinely so similar because there's something I have like a, a kind of drawing tablet, but for me, I just find it easier to be kind of like say rougher on paper because it doesn't feel as pressurized. I think I still have this thing in my head that when I get out a computer and a drawing tablet, it has to be perfect. Whereas on paper, I can just do it roughly. And like you said, yeah, take a photo, mm -hmm. send that on. Okay, great. And what do you know for your animators? Do you know what software they're using to, to, to actually animate the show? Uh, yeah, they are using a program called Krita. Um, oh, cool. I'm not as familiar with it, but I'm, I'm sure yeah. if uh, animators out there know, they're like, yes, yes, I know exactly what it is. Um, okay, but I know it's uh, mostly from like a, like a puppet style animation where like all the different like pieces of the character are all in place and you can just move it as you please. Brilliant. Um, okay. But, but yeah, that's kind of the, the primary program that we've been using. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I like yourself. I don't have kind of much knowledge of it, but I always kind of curious to hear of you know different there are so many different softwares out there uh mm -hmm. and it's easier just to get snagged in by the kind of big names but big names also come sometimes with big uh big price tags and when you're starting out yeah. you're trying to keep costs low so anything that offers like free to moderately priced software is always great mm -hmm. so i might leave a link uh, uh, to that as well just so people can can check it out but okay brilliant and then so when you're say writing a tv show how much of that do you have to like have figured out, say, before you begin, before you bring artists and things like that in? You were saying, you know, you knew the the kind of the watch, the time traveling. Did you have rough ideas for each episodes planned out or, or how much detail did you have? Yeah, I think um, for this one, um, detail really had to be kind of in, in the show. 
um because I, I really wanted this kind of be more of like a script driven show rather than like a board driven show um okay. so yeah i was like reading writing the script over and over and over again sending it to a bunch of my writer friends getting their feedback because i just wanted the story to be as solid as possible before people start animating because i know it's a time travel is like a big concept so, yeah yeah just having it's it easy to get lost sometimes definitely yeah exactly <laughs> and i've been through countless drafts where people were just like okay that doesn't really make sense in time travel so you should really like fix that I'm like okay so okay. yeah i had to go through uh, numerous drafts in order to kind of get it to a, a solid place with it or at least i can kind of get away with the, the concept of time travel and everything yes um, yeah but, but yeah it was yeah it was definitely a, a lot of drafts but but yeah it, it was definitely worth it for sure okay and it sounds great that you have that again that kind of community of like say peers and, and friends that you can send stuff to because i think mm. that's just so important to get feedback from someone who maybe hasn't laid eyes on it even something as simple yeah. as making sure things make sense because i think mm. it can be in your head so long that you don't see the little disconnects when someone's like how mm. did he you know get to this point and you're yeah. like oh isn't it obvious and if it's not mm. you know you, yeah. you know you have to go back and, and fix it okay mm. great and then did you you know in terms of the the actual like obviously zach is the the main character did you have kind of story arcs sort of written out for him uh specifically or did you already know kind of what other characters were going to be involved or is that something you were waiting until you till you brought more people on oh you know i've definitely had a, a lot of arcs for for zach um i've definitely daydreamed a lot about this show just as the years okay. have gone on um i guess like the the hard part is just like okay choosing which stories to tell um because yeah. i at uh, first i was like i'm gonna have like a three to five season story arc you know all these different <laughs> things going on and then of course you know you, you have people who say hey why don't you just focus on like this one episode yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why don't you just focus on like okay zach you know has a has a problem asking this girl out and you know he, he needs to time travel to solve it so i'm like okay yeah so so that that's really really good just kind of like balancing things out kind of focusing things more um okay. and just focusing on like okay let's just have just a little little baby arc for zach in this episode over these 11 minutes instead of like this five season arc <laughs> planned out of all these like ups and downs here's and villains so yeah that, we, that's been, that's been a good yeah so it's been a good challenge to okay focus it down more. and i'd say it is tough to rein it in sometimes because you know you like you said you've lived with this idea for so long that you probably you know have thought and thought about it uh, even when you're not writing it, you're probably thinking and, um, and and stuff like that. And for you, I don't know if you have this experience of kind of, you know, being out or being somewhere. Do you have like a notebook or even on your phone or something, places where you like kind of keep ideas, like when you're out and about, is that something that you're kind of constantly writing? Or do you have to set yourself time like today, I'm going to spend two hours writing, like no matter what, or are you just kind of doing it as it as the ideas come to you? Yeah, I think um, probably earlier on, um, I've definitely been the type to like keep writing down ideas in a notebook uh, to the point where I just have to keep buying new notebooks because I have yeah. so many ideas. <laughs> so I definitely have a, a backlog of, of ideas for for, for uh, notebooks and everything, or for, for uh, the show. Um, but yeah, I think now it's just kind of time to kind of sit down and kind of just like find time to actually write out an actual idea. Um, so it's, it's definitely, I've definitely been learning like discipline and kind of sitting down like, okay, I just need to find time to like, you know, beat out the scenes, um, kind of put them on a the board, uh, come up with an outline, and then eventually have a script. Um, okay. So that's been a a, a, a good uh, challenge for sure, because it's easy to come up with an idea, but it's, it's harder to actually, you know, flesh it out into an actual story that works. Yeah. So oh, yeah, I completely I think, agree. Uh, that's, um, yeah, for sure. It's but a, but it's, it's, it's been a really good challenge. Okay, brilliant. Because yeah, it's all it's so so much more fun, isn't it, to come up with just the idea. Like, oh, this happens. Mm -hmm. And then someone's like, okay, flash that out. And you're like, oh, like this is the this is the part that yeah. like takes a bit of effort, bit of bit of discipline, like yeah. you said. Okay, perfect. And did you uh did you have to figure like a lot of this out by yourself? Or you know the way you were saying with your like your your friends, your writers, were you sending stuff back and, and they were kind of like just kind of critiquing in terms of like this makes sense, but you need to, you know shore this up a bit or was there ever kind of any brainstorming where you know people would be suggesting like maybe some ideas for you or things like that did you find it quite collaborative or was it more for kind of feedback yeah i think more in the early stages uh, when i was coming up with like the feature link script is when i was kind of sending it off to people for, for their feedback um and then once i kind of had a solid base for the origin story um and kind of going into the spinoff ideas that's when i was kind of more open to collaboration 
Um, because right. after that, we kind of decided like, maybe we can make it just at least if we ever do get a first season, make it more kind of episodic episodes uh, instead of kind of like serialized episodes. And yeah. that kind of really opened the door for more collaboration. So Paige has been giving me like a whole bunch of ideas, um, you know, right. different like crew members who have different ideas, like they would drop concept art and I would kind of get an idea from that. Um, so it, it started off more feedback and now it's more collaborative. Brilliant. Okay. And again, I love the way you've laid that out because I think, yeah, the, the kind of episodic thing does seem to lend itself because you know you have one episode's almost an island in itself that you know what happens in here we don't necessarily need to see those characters so yeah you know you you can kind of suggest something bring it in uh no that's great um one thing i meant to mention from uh, and those who check out the teaser trailer will see this as well first thing that struck me about the teaser trailer was the music i absolutely love that mm. song was that something you always knew you needed like a, a theme song and, and how did that how did that come about oh yes definitely yeah I, i've always grown up on like the the 90s and uh, yeah. early 2000s <laughs> cartoon shows where there's always a theme song now you just have like a little bit of music in the title and then you're on you're on mm. the episode but yeah i miss like we don't really have theme songs anymore like i really want it's funny get back isn't it they're kind of just yeah. like erratic it's just not the trend anymore like you said yeah even, a lot of things it's just slow bits of music mm. and just the sting of a title and it's gone yeah exactly uh, whereas yeah yeah. So I just wanted to, yeah so i just wanted to be like a throwback to those shows and just have a theme song involved um especially kind of if we get into the story kind of a theme song that kind of involves like the origin story just in case like people didn't like watch the origin story or that movie they can just like watch this little theme song and then kind of get okay now i understand like how zach you get a sense of it yes yeah okay perfect mm -hmm. And who who uh, wrote the song? Can I ask? Yeah, it was uh, um, a uh, writer named uh, Tyler Rydos. He's a writer composer. Um, he's done like animation and other um, stories here and there. Um, and he's yeah, he's a brilliant writer. I I sent him kind of like the ideas I wanted for the lyrics. I kind of wrote down a poem of like the origin story of Zach, and he kind of like took it and like kind of like kind of like, twisted the, the words a little bit more to kind of make it more into a, a, a song. Uh, which is great and then wow. um another performer his name's chris lee was the actual uh, person who performed the theme song so it was like their collaboration tyler did the music and the lyrics and then uh chris uh did the performance wow okay mm -hmm. and did you just in terms of the style of the music did you know like did you have a sound in your head of what you wanted it to sound like or did you kind of just pass on lyrics and you were like you know leaving it open to, to the composer yeah, I definitely told him, um, like, I was kind of looking for, like, a, like a Jamie Phantom theme song style thing. Kind okay, of like, nice. Like a, like a rap rock kind of thing. Um, yeah. And he's uh, Kim Possible kind of, kind of theme yeah. song. He's like, oh, yeah, because he grew up on the same show. So, like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking he about. He got it straight away. Sent, okay. Yeah. And then he kind of sent us the music. Um, and he sent us kind of like a rough draft of, like, with his uh, vocals in it. And we're just like, yep, that's it. Uh, Paige gave her feedback, little tweaks here and there. And then he uh, took that, sent it off to Chris directed him and his vocals and then sent us back the new draft and we were just like oh my gosh this is wow. the theme song yeah <laughs> uh, we saw little, little kicks here and there but but yeah the, after that we we're just like oh my gosh this is this is amazing like we it, were it must be so nice tear up a little bit. yeah yeah because mm -hmm. i think especially like you said when you send it off to someone and it comes back you know either what you were hoping for or even to exceed it is always such mm -hmm. an exciting thing because when you send something off to someone you can be a little bit terrifying because you know it's not a reflection on anyone else it's just sometimes maybe they didn't get quite exactly what you were going for and when you come back and the piece of music just isn't there it can be a little bit disheartening because you're like oh but uh yeah i have to say straight away it had that catchy kind of uh uh yeah just that real catchy uh lyric uh and and melody that i was like oh man this is a real throwback to like 90s tv like you said theme songs that kind of stuff and can i ask about the 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 show has a really kind of nice clean style and color palette um what kind of you know from your early concepts say in your in college and your senior year did the show kind of was there ever a conversation about the style kind of evolving or maybe someone suggesting like a slightly different style or did you know in your head this is always what i wanted to be mm. Yeah, originally I was definitely going for like a uh, like a Butch Hartman, Jamie Phantom style. Yeah. Um, but then uh, talking to Paige was like, okay, obviously that that's uh, copyrighted, so we have to kind of have our own style. Um, yeah. So once we brought Luke on board, we we're just like, okay, th these are the this is what the characters originally looked like, very Butch Hartman inspired, but we really kind of want our own look and feel. So once he kind of 
jumped on board. He kind of ran with it, and uh, he kind of gave us like little drawings here and there, of, like, hey, maybe you can like round the characters a little bit more, make them look more appealing. You know, have like the bigger eyes and you know like uh, elongated features here and there. Maybe change the color palette because originally uh, Zach um, he, he very much looked kind of like like Timmy Turner or Danny Phantom. Okay. Um, he he was uh he was like Caucasian with like brown hair and blue eyes at first, and then um, you know just talking with people, he's like, hey, we just make it just a little bit more personal to to your own experiences. So I decided to make him biracial, so he's half black, half white. Wow. Um, so he like you know, his hair curly, give him like tanner skin, change his color palette. Originally it was kind of like red and blue to uh, orange and green now because it's not really like a common color and yeah. kind of just revamped his whole character. And I think that actually kind of changed the writing a little bit uh, more. So originally it's kind of like more kind of like a kind of like a bratty teenager here and there. And then once Luke came on board into the style, he came more kind of like more like empathetic and more like genuine and just more kind of enthusiastic so they actually changed the writing as well so there is definitely a lot of changes but i think all the changes were for the better for, for sure. the better okay that's incredible <clears throat> yeah. i love that that kind of collaboration and feedback can have that kind of effect because i was going to say you know there's it's i think more and more now like with animation both professional and hobbyist it's great to see kind of more diversity in roles mm -hmm. that it isn't just because i think you know without even meaning to sometimes you kind of tend to write what's like i don't mean what's popular but you know in your head you're so used to seeing like this represented on screen that that's what you write like when someone says to you you know draw a butcher you can kind of see this like big you know like heavy set guy but like he's predominantly this white i always think of the guy from hey arnold like oh, yeah. red hair raspy voice yeah. so i think that's cool that like you were open to that kind of uh you know collaboration and and that helped then kind of change the writing did it yeah definitely definitely can you talk to us a little bit specifically about zach and kind of like his his background and and like his his journey yeah definitely yeah he um definitely was inspired by a lot from from me um he um there's certain aspects that that i kind of created for him and then certain aspects that you know were kind of inspired by me but yeah, basically his, he's a child of a single parent. Um, his dad kind of split off from his family when he was about eight years old um, to kind of pursue his own kind of dreams in like the music industry. Um, so he's very much just kind of raised by his mom. Um, and then he always felt like kind of broken from that experience. Like he, he never really felt like, am I good enough? Like, what's my purpose? Like my dad left me, was it because of me? So he kind of always had that chip on his shoulder. And then suddenly when him and his mom moved to this new town, um, he's just like, okay, great. Now I don't know anybody here. Like, where do I fit in? Um, and that that's actually kind of inspired from my own story. Like I, I, when I was about 11 years old, I moved from California to Maryland and I didn't definitely didn't know anybody there. Um, uh, there's, it was mostly predominantly um, like a black school that I went to. Um, so I looked like everyone else, but I didn't sound like everyone else. They were like, what, where are you from? Like, why, why do you sound like that? And all this stuff. And I just felt okay. like very fish out of water character and I really want to put that into Zach, uh, especially him being biracial, like do I hang out with the white kids? Do I hang out with the black kids? Like where do I fit in? Um, so the, the theme of, of Zach and Time, I, I would say is uh, belonging, um, kind of finding your place in this world. And he's like a 13 year old boy, middle schooler, like we're already kind of, you're at that age, you're kind of kind of trying to figure yourself out. And then on top of this, now he's, he has his time traveling watch and he's kind of the center of this whole agency now um, that's kind of centered around time traveling missions. So suddenly he's another fish out of water where he's like this kid in this adult world, <laughs> this adult action adventure agency world. And how does that, how does he fit in with all that? Um, so it's really just him trying to find himself and really just trying to prove that he, he does have a place, he does have a purpose, and he does have a uh, community around him who will love and support him and kind of help him on this journey um, as he becomes, you know, the, the hero that he's, he's destined to be. Okay, wow, um, that sounds amazing. And can I just say that like, for me, what you're describing there let's say before even bringing in the aspects of kind of time travel and stuff i think it's so important to have like a good base like a good interesting character and kind of good like say interaction between let's say friends family that thing because a lot of my favorite films you know or or greedy great tv shows when they started like say something like i always remember stranger things like what drew me into that show was like you know the trailer for the idea of this like you know 
other world and all the sci-fi elements but the opening scene is just friends playing board games and kind of slagging each other and stuff we can all relate to and you kind of almost forget that there's a sci-fi element to it so i think when you can win people over with just kind of characters and relationships then the the plot the time traveling is like an added bonus and it definitely sounds like you have a very rich kind of character basis to to kind of draw from there both personally and then you know what you're able to create so well, that sounds amazing um you also mentioned to me before that you kind of wanted to use this show to give young artists some experience and stuff um why like why was that important to you yeah that was definitely a, a goal that Paige and I both had um just because like when we went to film school like there wasn't really like opportunities for us as we were kind of like learning we would have to like get like an internship or or something like that and usually with the internship, like it would kind of just be like basic level work, like, hey, grab me some coffee or make these copies. Like we weren't really kind of doing things that we were we loved to do. So with yeah. uh, her production company, it's called I'm Happy. Um, we really want to kind of give uh, you know interns or volunteers like hands on experience of like what they really want to do uh, and like what they're kind of what they'll be expected to do um, once they kind of get into the industry um, post uh coffee grabbing and, and running and stuff like that. <laughs> and I want to give them kind of like, hey, I want to be an animator. Okay, let's give them shots to animate. Um, we right. don't want to just kind of, like, you know, waste their time with like kind of menial tasks here and they really want to give them the experiences that, that they want, um, you know, once they kind of graduate college and everything. So that's kind of our, our goal with, uh, with our kind of production company. Brilliant, brilliant. And is that something that like, you know, going forward at the moment for, for Zach and Time working on this uh, official trailer, is that, something that you're kind of doing with a smaller crew do you foresee like possibly taking on more people then in the future like that would be mm. something you'd hope to do with kind of recruiting maybe mm. kind of the inexperience let's say but with a view to giving them a chance because i do think that that's a big issue in all industries it's kind of the same here in ireland that sometimes there's a bit of a drop off from when you come out of college to what's expected of you mm. in the industry it's like that catch 22 they want to see examples of your work well, yeah you haven't gotten to do any work yet so yeah like, how do you show examples okay great mm. and would you have would you have contacts in like kind of through through page or either yourself through like local kind of colleges and things like that or, or how would you go about finding these people yeah yeah Paige, um she's part of a, a bunch of different uh animation groups um kind of like fellowships and things like that and she right. reaches out to them and actually a lot of people that we had um, have gone and moved on to animation jobs uh, actually in the industry uh, through us and like second time was their first experience. So um, okay. once they kind of go into those jobs, like they definitely love to mention like, hey, this is my second time was my first experience and it kind of gives us more exposure. Um, so Brilliant. yeah, we're definitely hoping to kind of expand our circle even more and more and just take on more volunteers and, you know, just kind of build up this company even more and more. Yeah, it's very, yeah we're definitely exciting. Brilliant. No, yeah. geez, that sounds great. And uh, another thing you were saying that I was really interested by was that you're planning to use uh, Indiegogo to fund it. Can you, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, right now we're kind of on a, a, a volunteer basis uh, right now. Um, is it just because you know, we're, we're independent? We don't really have the, the means to, you know, uh, compensate people at the moment. So we're kind of taking on volunteers um, and we really want, you know, uh, Indiegogo to kind of help pay back the people who who given up their time and uh, given up their their talents for us, um, just kind of just you know as a thank you, and you know also to kind of help us fund uh, future episodes uh, in the in um, in the series, uh, just because you know animation is very expensive and it takes a very yeah. long time. <laughs> um, so having as much uh, um, um, kind of funding uh, on our side on board as possible would be really helpful for us. So that's what we're, we're hoping to do. We're hoping to launch it. We don't have a, an exact date uh, right now. Um, we're thinking maybe like late spring, early summer, just a rough estimate, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, um, okay. But right now we're just trying to kind of get our, um, you know, our social media numbers up and, you know, reach out to like, you know, guys like you and, um, you know, other um, like podcasts or like animation magazines, just kind of get the word out about what we're trying to do and hopefully kind of get people on board with us and, you know, get people excited about uh, the future of Zach and Time. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. And do you have with Indiegogo, do you have to, cause I know I've used a similar one here in Ireland called fund it where you kind of set a, a goal, a budget, but with fund it, you only get your kind of your, your kind of money that people have pledged. If you meet your goal, is it the same with Indiegogo or do you have to like set a specific thing 
or can you come in under it or you, you have to achieve it 100% to get it, is it? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, you can come under your goal and get the money. Um, that's more a Kickstarter uh, here, here in the States. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, where, um, yeah, if you if you don't meet your goal, you don't get anything. Yeah, uh, which I always thought was like, really harsh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's really like all or nothing with with uh, Kickstarter. We're like, yeah, let's go with the uh, Indiegogo. Yeah, so at okay. Least you get some funding. Um, so, and I think also Indiegogo. I think they take about like a, a small percentage of it. So sometimes we have to kind of overestimate uh, our budget just so just we to know work that, we that in. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And are you yeah. are you budgeting this campaign for kind of just the say the pilot, or is it the pilot and a few episodes? Uh, right now, um, I think we're trying to do just the pilot uh, for now, um, and then just try to do like maybe like future stuff uh, on our own or with any extra money that we have from the pilot episode. We kind of try to budget as much um, just so we can have like maybe like have a little bit extra for the future. But for, for right now, it's kind of primarily just for the pilot. For the pilot, okay, brilliant, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think yeah, no, I love the sounds of Indiegogo because yeah, I always thought that was so harsh. I mean, obviously, I understand the reasons behind it to try and you know it kind mm-hmm. of forces you to really market mm-hmm. and try and push but i also just thought it was really cruel that you know sometimes you can be at like 70 percent, and you know that could be seven yeah. grand and then to have that turn around mm-hmm. and be like no nope, you get nothing you're like yeah. <laughs> all that money people pledge and you know because a lot of the time yeah. when people pledge for this mm-hmm. it's because they want to support you and uh mm-hmm. to not be able to turn around and, and and show results out of that i always thought was quite harsh but no that sounds great yeah and can i ask just in general because when you start creating something, I think all animators, writers can, can relate to the idea of, you know, having an idea that's yours and, and you kind of fantasize about what it might become, where it might be. What is your ultimate goal for, say, Zach and Time? Like, what would you, what would it be your, like, success look like? Yeah, definitely. We would love to have this be picked up as, like, a full-on series by, like, either, like, a studio or, like, an independent company. Um, we really would like to partner with someone who, you know, sees our vision through, um, who, you know, really believes in what we're doing. Someone who's not going to just like take an idea and like roll or do their own thing with it or like make a bunch of changes to it. They, I won't really want to have someone who's like on the same level with us and who will know who will work with us to kind of get it out to like the, on the biggest platform possible or to the biggest audience possible. Okay, brilliant. And is it, is it, uh, do you think it's more like definitely uh, from what I understand, the idea of like a pilot is easier to kind of promote because it's a perfect snapshot almost you know you kind of have a beginning and an end but it's also a nice calling card for well there's more potential here you know what i mean like mm-hmm. here's where we can go is your hope to use that pilot to kind of you know advertise and maybe get people kind of invested mm-hmm. through that yeah yeah exactly definitely okay brilliant brilliant well look it sounds absolutely amazing like i said i'll i'll leave the link i was so curious when uh, you reached out to me. I've never, like, I think for me, I'm so used to people starting with kind of shorts, you know, they'll start with, you know, two or three minutes short, because like you said, you know, when you're in college, you have an idea for a TV series, mm-hmm. you suddenly realize that even a minute of animation is going to be a mm-hmm. lot to get done. So you really have to scale yeah. it down. So I think the the idea of a TV show is, is so uh, ambitious and uh, I, I wish you the best of luck with it for uh, for everything in the future. But before I let you go, I always like to kind of do just an advice section at the end because the aim of this podcast hopefully is talking to people like you about your kind of process, be it writing or animating and, and kind of how you kind of get through good and the bad. And I think it's always nice just to pass on kind of some of your advice um, at the end. So can I ask, do you have any advice for anyone starting out, say in animation or writing, like anything you wish maybe someone had told you? Yeah, for sure. I think probably the biggest piece of advice um, I would give would be to just, yeah, don't be afraid to just kind of jump into it. Um, I think a lot of people, they, they might fear like, oh, like, what if, what if nobody likes it? Or, you know, what if, you know, I, I can't get a crew together? Or like, what if I can't do this or that? And I think just having that, that, that first step of just maybe just something like five minutes, just, you know, just coming up with like just a bunch of different ideas, like, like what, if I ever had a show, like what would it be? And just have just, just a list, just spend five minutes doing that. And then maybe like the next day, just like pick two or three of those ideas. And then like the next day, write, write a sentence, like a log line for what that idea might be. Um, I think just taking like little steps here and there, um, cause I know it can be very overwhelming to kind of take on a project. Um, but as long as you take those kind of like baby steps to kind of get along the way, 
I think, yeah, just starting um, is like the best best thing to do. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, and I think it like it really does help when you know you're so passionate about the idea. You know, when it's yours, not that you know collaborating is great, and I think getting on board with other people's ideas. But I think when you're starting out, sometimes it's really nice to have something that's yours, and even if it's just an exercise, like it doesn't necessarily always go somewhere. But I think having that creative outlet, that's something. And I think your 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 advice there to just factor in a little bit of discipline, like have your idea, write it a log line, because mm. you know you can't improve on nothing. Whereas at least if you get mm. something down, you, know, you come back to it, tweak it, that kind of thing. Brilliant. Mm. And um, I assume because of the the madness we're living in at the moment of COVID and everything, I assume that a lot of your um, like kind of interaction with your team and stuff has been done remotely. Has it? Have you got mm. to meet up with anyone physically to do this, or has it all been? online no i think the only person i met with physically was uh was Paige when she uh, she actually lives here in the, the central valley uh to oh brilliant, to, brilliant. You know, to like half an hour away so she actually uh drove out to give me uh the, we were doing a poster giveaway so she actually oh, wow. she the posters and gave it to me so that was probably the only time we actually talked physically this entire uh time uh since we made the idea wow um, and, i never yeah. i'm only noticing the poster now man it looks yeah. awesome <laughs> wow cool yeah it's so nice to have a bit of wall art behind you i love it yeah so, definitely. so everyone else uh, like that you've been dealing with has been fully remote have they yeah all remote i haven't met anyone from the crew in person yeah it's it's definitely a weird experience but wow. i feel like I, I know them like so well but i've never actually talked to them in talk person. them that's crazy yeah. and are, are a lot of them local or are some of them like quite far away like could you ever oh, see yeah, some of them, yeah some of them are definitely like yeah um I think we have some people from like the uk some people from like oh South wow america yeah we have people coming up from all over the place brilliant that's been yeah. one of the like in my experience anyway one of the kind of few advantages of uh, the whole pandemic is that it's really kind of forced people to sort of figure out ways of working that aren't, you know, physically in a location. But I think it's also opened people up to opportunities because, you know, before you probably would have looked just quite locally to see you mm -hmm. could source because meeting up was a big thing. Whereas now you can be so open to, like you said, I think that's so cool that there can be someone in Brazil, someone in England who's, you know, kind of feeding in on this and as a as a director is that hard to manage like that like would you have like face-to-face -face, you know zoom calls or things like that or is it more through email how do you how do you manage that collaboration yeah it can definitely be uh be hard sometimes um just knowing like okay are, are you working on this shot or like are, are you recording this audio or something like that okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just trying to be like in constant communication uh, and Paige is definitely uh, more is definitely better at that than, than I am um, I kind of just like reaching out to people and like following up like hey did you get this done did you meet this deadline um, can I see what your, your progress and everything um, she definitely does a lot of like weekly check-ins with, with a lot of okay. crew members um, we're always on we use the, the app uh, called discord um, kind of like the communication right. app so we're always on that sharing our, our feedback or like our progress and everything um, so, so that's, that's been good. Um, just having someone, uh, have my back just so I'm not, not the only one who's kind of like reaching out yeah. and have someone, um, Perfect. who's like the more, um, communicative, uh, one, uh, in the group. And do you think, is that important? Just that kind of, I don't mean like hounding people, but that kind of like gentle reminder, constant communication, because I think it is so easy, isn't it to say, oh yeah, I'll get to that. And then two weeks go by and you haven't done anything. Whereas if someone's just there like you know just checking in it can be a nice helpful and i think it sounds great that you have yourself and page that you know you can take on those duties together mm. maybe by yourself it would be a lot mm. yeah yeah definitely we, we definitely love to like delegate the task for sure um she gives me all the kind of creative side stuff like okay um this person asking about the story stuff or this character moment or like this uh character movement i'll just leave it all to you and then um for, for her she's like yeah I'll, I'll just take on all the kind of like scheduling tasks uh you know meetings um things like that so it's definitely good because if i were to do all that I, my brain would just explode yeah. <laughs> to do both sides so i'm glad we have to kind of have that that division yeah uh, between the two of us but also kind of like that in that synchronization as well brilliant okay brilliant and it you know just putting ourselves in like say the the shoes of someone out there who, who has an idea because i'm sure there's a lot of people who have you know, an idea for maybe a TV show or a short, um, but they don't know how to get it made. Do, you know, do you have any advice for anyone who might be in your position in the future? Is anything you, you would pass on as like, 
here's what you can do. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, kind of like what I was saying before. Yeah, just like just write down like as many ideas as, as you can. Um, you know, nothing has to be like you know Oscar worthy. Just just write an idea down. When I first wrote the idea for Zach and Tanya, it was like pretty pretty terrible, pretty like two dimensional, like no character development, like the story didn't make sense at all. But at least I, I wrote something. And then, you know, as the time goes by, like things will develop, things will get better. And as long as you like show people and you just allow that feedback, just don't have an ego about anything. Um, allow people to like help you along the journey, um, you know, give you that critique, that criticism, that encouragement um, is, is definitely something I would, I would recommend for sure. Um, and then you'll just kind of get better from there. But, but yeah, it's definitely a, a, a slow process. Um, I wouldn't say it's going to be like instant, like you have an idea and yeah. boom, we have like a teaser trailer out. It's like, it, it'll take time. So I would say have patience. Um, believe in the idea, come up with the idea that you believe in, something that you can put your personality, put your heart into, put your soul into, because it could take like three, four, five years to, to make. Um, so as long as you are passionate about the idea constantly, and you know, you're know you not going to just kind of give up you know, halfway, yeah. you kind of, you're, you're all into it, um, then yeah, I would say that's the, the biggest thing. Just just stick with it. If you love it, just keep, keep sticking with it. Yeah. And I think that's so important. It has to be something that you know, you're passionate about that you're living and breathing. Because like you said, there is sometimes this maybe misconception that, you know, oh, I have this idea. Next week, it'll be a story. The week after we'll be making it. You're like, no, this might be brewing in your head for, you know, months, if not years. So you have to kind of road test it and let it let it settle. Make sure it's something you're happy to, to kind of do. And I suppose in that regards, because, you know, when you're doing creative things, you have good and bad days. Do you have kind of any you know tips or or things you like to do to get through a bad day because no matter what type of creative you are there's some days you feel like you know you're untouchable and you've gotten so much done and every idea has been great and then there's some days you just can't catch a break you know you're everything you're doing is just not working out is there anything like you like to do to take a break or relax or just any tips you'd have on that yeah, for sure. I think just just doing something else, uh, anything else besides, you know, forcing yourself to create an idea. Like for me, it would be like going on walks or like listening to a podcast or music. Um, I, yeah, that, that I feel like that kind of really kind of decompresses me a lot. And yeah, just doing maybe like doing laundry, doing a puzzle, just something else that can kind of like let your mind kind of like wander a little bit. Okay. And then once you feel like, you know, you feel like relaxed, that's kind of where the ideas kind of come in. Um, like like organizing like your bookshelf or something like yeah. anything uh, anything else <laughs> i'm gonna do it by color yeah. instead of by alphabet this time yeah you know, okay. <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but but okay, yeah that's true. it definitely does help for sure um just doing like anything else besides forcing yourself because like once you kind of like let your mind kind of be at ease like that's when the ideas can kind of float in a little bit more if you have like a story problem or something like oh that that's that's how it can be solved okay and then you can kind of go back to it the next day or the next week and kind of you know get back to work it's almost like subconsciously it seeps in because i think it is you know it's so difficult sometimes to take yourself away from it isn't it i'm the worst for yeah you know i i do something that maybe made it worse and i just try and correct mm -hmm. and correct and correct and then you just feel the like frustration starting to yeah. rise so i think yeah just having the willpower to just go, no, like close the laptop or just step away from it is, uh, is always a great thing. And then I suppose just yeah. finally, before I let you go, I just wanted to ask just in terms of like kind of social media and stuff like that, because obviously, you know, when you're trying to build awareness for something, uh, it's easier said than done to like, you know, you set up an Instagram account or a YouTube account, but mm. trying to get things seen. Do you have any experience, like any do's or don'ts in terms of like, have you found, you know, any particular platforms to be like a little bit better for say promoting your stuff or is there any kind of hidden gems or things that you found that you're like, you know, I found this platform works better or here's what I tend to do that I think works. Do, do you have any tips on anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I think um, Instagram is probably where our biggest audience is and we have like over a thousand followers there um and then Brilliant. probably our, our tiktok we have a, I think about like three thousand followers on, on that um wow. so yeah i think yeah because yeah for some reason i guess our um, instagram like there's just the share factor is just like in, in, um, exponentially better than maybe like a facebook or a twitter um yeah. you can put something out there and gets like thousands and thousands of views like instantly already um so i think that's that's been our biggest audience for sure yeah tiktok and then yeah even like yeah youtube as well um that that's been a great a great uh place as well because Anything, I think, anything video related, if you have anything like visual, 
and like, like visually interesting or like video. Uh, I think those are probably like the best uh, pieces that we, we uh, usually put out there. Um, if people like, like music out there, I think like our theme song that got like a ton, ton of views. Um, our, our teaser trailer obviously got like uh, a bunch of views there. Um, so I think like any kind of like animation, anything with the characters moving, interacting, I think that's probably anything that's like visually like, whoa, I gotta click on this, I gotta share this. I think that's probably stuff that we kind of got the most attention from. Brilliant, okay. Cause yeah, there, you, do you ever find that there's so much kind of choice out there? I think we all have like, I tend to use more kind of Instagram and YouTube, even though I have a Twitter account, I just haven't really gotten into it as much. And I, I've never really used TikTok before. So sometimes it can be overwhelming, you know, when you're starting things out. And w- would you kind of have help managing that? Would you be looking after those accounts or is that something like yourself and Paige and others kind of split or, or is it more just you? Yeah, we have a, um, a, a social media manager, her name's Holly Payne. Um, she oh, actually great. worked with Butch Hartman on, on his uh, uh, different platforms and everything, still does. Um, and she's she's been kind of really brilliant with that. We kind of give her ideas of like, hey, maybe you can post this, post that. And then she would kind of go on wrong with it. She would post it, put like a cool caption, cool hashtags here and there. She would like great. reach out to different people, like retweet other people's, you know, um, mentions or would say like, hey, like, hey, Zach and Time's doing this stuff or doing that. Um, so she's been really kind of at the front of like our social media campaign. She's wow. been brilliant with that. Okay, that's amazing. And and is that, did you kind of just approach her with that or, or how did you, how did you get in touch with her? Yeah, we actually met, um, through, we actually, another person we never met in person, but we've been kind of like uh, social media friends uh, through our mutual love of Danny Phantom. Um, oh, years wow. ago, I did a, a live action recreation of the Dan Kenton theme song and uh, sent it to her because she uh, created the hashtag Go Ghost Again, um, the good um, uh, Danny Phantom kind of campaign, bring Danny Phantom back campaign. Yeah. And she right away, we just became uh, social media friends from there. Um, and she was like, hey, if you're ever working on something, like I would love to work on it in any capacity. And then, yeah, the, the, the time came where we're like, hey, we need someone with social media experience to kind of get the word out there about Sagging Time. And would you love to come on board? And she's like, yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, she's wow. been on for the past uh, like year, year and a half or so, and she's been amazing. Um, and she's really been kind of like the sole person uh, in charge of our social media, and she's been awesome. Brilliant. Okay, uh, that's amazing. I love hearing stories like that because genuinely, like nine times out of ten, the my experience of like the animation community uh, is is just so positive. Like things like that, mm-hmm. like people creating content for the love of something, you know, celebrating it. Mm-hmm. Like it's not seen as copyright infringement because. It's just fans, you know, paying tribute to shows. And I think it's so nice when you get a kind of a reward from that. You can find a, you know, a shared love of something and then end up connecting from that. So, uh, no, that's uh, that's really, really cool, man. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so I suppose yeah. that's kind of it, the end of our show. The last thing I just wanted to ask you was where people can get in touch with you. So if they have kind of any questions or they're curious to know more, maybe about you know, when the Indiegogo campaign launches or even just to, you know, follow some stuff about Zach and Time, where's the best best place to do it? Yeah, definitely. You can find me on uh, Instagram. I'm uh, at Christian Dion Haynes. Um, I'm also on Twitter uh, at Christian Dion H. Uh, and then you can also find me on YouTube, uh, Mr. Homemade Films 1. Um, those are probably like the primary uh, places that I post. Uh, and yeah, you can also follow, follow me on TikTok if you want to as well. Uh, Christian Dion Haynes uh, underscore. Um, yeah, so those would be like the, the biggest ones right there. Brilliant. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to all those uh, in the description below. So if people want to kind of reach out, they can they can do so through that. But can I just say, uh, Christian, thanks so much for, for taking the time. Was there anything you wanted to say in closing? Anything uh, we, we never got a chance to get to? Uh, no, I think I covered everything, but uh, yeah, I think uh, to summarize, yeah, we're, we're really excited about this project and, you know, we just want to make it the best that we can be, that it can be. And, um, you know, just the fact that anyone just like follows it or, you know, just like, you know, like likes a photo or just any, or just gets the word out to any other like friends, family, animation people. Uh, we're, yeah, we're really excited about that. So yeah, here's the future of Zach and Time. We'll see what happens with it. Brilliant. Uh, Christian, thank you so much for coming on the show. It It was a pleasure talking to you. So that is it for this episode of Cartoon Cosmonauts. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my guest, Christian Haynes, for coming onto the show and talking about his TV show, Zack and Time. You can find the teaser trailer on YouTube 
And if you'd like to get in touch with Christian and keep track of the progress of Zach and Time, you can find him on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And again, I'll leave all the links to everything in the description below. If you'd like to get in touch with me, perhaps with some questions, feedback, or even to discuss your own short on the show, then you can find me online at Speak Broccoli on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Just look for the green broccoli logo. You can also email speakbroccoli at gmail.com. Thanks for taking the time to join me here today. I've been your host, Joseph Orr, and you've been listening to the Cosmic Sounds of Cartoon Cosmos.